presentation. We're very excited to share um, how we put the pieces together at our school regarding STEM education. Um, it's interesting because um, Dr. Alma was saying that when she was presenting, she was thinking about the thinking. And that was really exciting for me to hear because when Lisa and I put this presentation together, it allowed us to think about the thinking. And now today we're going to be sharing that with you and, um, and hopefully be able to reach out and get some feedback on a new program at our school and how, how we're thinking about putting it together and moving forward with it. Oops. My, my name is Nancy Schrager and I am an instructional coach at the school and a teacher specialist in the area of STEM education, science, and history. Uh, I've been at the school for 29 years in a variety of different positions from elementary school to high school and administration. And now I have the luxury of focusing on STEM K through 12 with my partner. Partner in crime, yes. <laughs> my, name, my name is Lisa Kunchbeck and I am the alternate curriculum teacher specialist at the California School for the Deaf. And I've been in that position for about 14 years. Prior to that, I was an alternate curriculum teacher. And that just means that we have um, a group of deaf plus students that need extra support and alternate materials. Um, so I'm kind of a jack of all trade. I tap into the, uh, all the other resource specialists and their depth of knowledge in the content areas. And I piggyback on them and try to help our teachers fit programmings to these, this unique group of kids. As we mentioned, we do work at the School for the Deaf in Riverside. We're a pre-K through 22 year old campus. So we service all of the students that are involved in public education. We're located in Riverside, California. And I know that some of you are close by. So hello to our neighbors and hello to our, our other neighbors that are a little bit further out. We have 376 deaf and hard of hearing students enrolled on our campus currently, and we serve 13 counties in Southern California. And what that means is there are no students technically um, signed to a, a local school, school district called the California School for the Deaf Riverside. All of our students come from those counties and, and those local school districts. So they go through the IEP process and they're sent to us when they live over an hour away, then they live on our campus as residential students. And if they live closer, then they function as day students as they do um, in your programs. Today's agenda, we are going to give you um, a preview of our preliminary steps that we have taken to develop a makerspace and our vision for that and how we came up with that vision, the mission that we, we have related to it, and then our five-year implementation plan in connection to not just having a makerspace, but connecting it up to our high school CTE programming. And then at the end of our presentation, we would really like to take advantage of your expertise and provide a little survey and get some feedback from you on um, some different things like our alignment and implementation for professional development. If you have suggestions and ideas for us that we haven't thought about, um, we would really like to tap into you guys. Come on. And my mouse just stopped. There we go. No, nope. I I'm going to stop having this as a um, full screen because I'm having problems with it that way. Let me know if this is big enough for you guys to see everything. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Um, when we started the makerspace conversation, we needed to keep in mind the needs of our learning community, and that is our deaf and hard of hearing community. And we went and we looked at the statistics on what's happening in the world of deaf people in general, um, regarding employment, regarding in careers. And what we found is that 53% um, of deaf people were employed in 2017. That's when um, the United States presented a survey and was able to collect the data for that. The most common field of deaf adults was the manufacturing industry field. And um, the next in line was the medical field, which is very exciting for us to see because when we're talking about STEM education, that is um, where we could focus and strengthen on our campus in order to provide tools for our students in order to have solid careers and employment in the future. As you can see at the bottom of this slide, it does show the comparison between deaf individuals and hearing individuals, and only 46% of deaf individuals in California are employed. In Greater Los Angeles and the surrounding counties, uh, we have about 800,000 deaf and hard of hearing people. So that statistic is very, very low. And we wanted to improve the, those statistics and um, create an environment in which deaf students could excel and succeed through CTE programming and STEM practice. Every year, our CTE program um, focuses on their needs and also what will happen within the, the next year. This, this, part, this report is called the Comprehensive Local Needs Assessment Reporting, which is a CLNA. And when our school wrote this report or the principal of the CTE department with help of the curriculum department, they determined that CTE in general at our school had three major gaps. One was to improve the master schedule because it was impeding the pathways of the coursework for CTE. And um, the CTE department addressed that through getting together and taking a look at their curriculum, modifying it and redesigning that curriculum. And at the current time of the evaluation for the report, the program was not aligned to the CTE model curriculum standards. So um, those two areas were addressed last year and we now have a brand new CTE program, um, which is very strong and very powerful. The third, the third item on this list is they took a look at the students and as they engage in our K through um, 12 program, they were lacking the experience prior to entering the CTE pathways. So that's where Lisa and I come in. <laughs> we, we jumped in, we rolled up our sleeves to attack this issue. This is what we found when we, when we looked at elementary, middle school, and CTE. We started with the CTE program that was offering a STEM day and exposing middle school and elementary students to careers and possibilities for uh, STEM in the STEM area. And they were bringing in deaf role models. They were bringing in um, different opportunities to help middle school and elementary school students just to be exposed to those areas. Middle school, um, there was kind of um, attention given to the master schedule and how that could be changed in order to provide middle school with more intensive career exploration in order to prepare them for high school and their CTE program. And then there's elementary school who had a principal who was very motivated in order to provide some type of STEM experience for elementary, but wasn't quite sure what that would look like and um, how to create that space. And 
we got together to discuss a spiraling co career readiness program K through eight in order to achieve success as the students enter into the CTE program in high school. Which is how our maker space has turned into just a focus on elementary, but as a support system to um, our career technical education program in high school. Some of the things that we considered when we were looking at what we wanted to accomplish with the elementary maker space was um, really having an environment that was accessible to all students, looking at their diverse needs. So we had to look at different learning styles, multiple intelligences. Of course, Makerspace is the perfect environment for that because it's so kinesthetic, it's motivated, you can have art and um, more science related stuff. Um, presentation, it, it's perfect for small groups and having them work independently, extending and reteaching ideas providing having students have previous experiences and working on inquiry-based learning, showing kids that there's multiple ways to solve problems, not just one solution to things. And then having the relevancy of when we do this, we really want to make sure that the kids see that it's connected to them personally and then having a real world connection to them and that the materials that we'll have are age appropriate. Accessibility, hands-on manipulatives for all the kids and sufficient materials to follow COVID guidelines as we start developing this. We don't want kids sharing materials um, within different age groups or classrooms. And then for our own unique needs, we really needed to make sure that our environment that we were going to have was an environment that was conducive to having ASL and English languages um, accessible and looking at other communication needs of kids, kids who have communication boards or who have physical um, needs. So if we have children in wheelchairs, that our tables will rise and lower to accommodate different sized wheelchairs, to have our space set up so it would um, be at wheelchair accessible level for materials. And then the materials that we buy, make sure that they're not sound dependent because there's so many things out there that are so cool, but you have this little cute, um, emoji talking and there's no captioning and our kids are totally lost. So really looking at those were important when we were starting to think about this and design it. Nancy, are you taking this one or am I? Go ahead, Lisa. Okay. So then, <laughs> so then after um, Nancy and I did, did some of that legwork and some of that thinking process, we got together with the elementary principal, the middle school principal, and the CTE teacher or principal, and um, really had an in-depth conversation about what this was going to achieve and what our vision for it was. And the vision that we came up with was that it was going to be an all-inclusive STEAM maker space aligned with middle school career awareness and high school CTE pathways that engages elementary students in collaborating, communicating, creating and critical thinking. After we had that vision, Nancy and I um, took our, our, our principals on some field trips to other local um, schools that had maker spaces at different age levels. So we visited an elementary school, a middle school and a high school that had different ways that they had designed their maker spaces so we could see what we wanted it to encompass. And so in 2019, we did our legwork. And we also, um, because it was a collaboration with our CTE 
we managed to tap into some funds that most maker spaces do not have available to them, which is the Perkins Five funds, which are typically just for CTE career pathway programs. And they were able to buy us some items for our middle school program. And this year in 2020-21, they used those same funds to buy us a very cool, amazing um, thing called a maker cart, which has tons of open-ended things to build with, create with, design with, little batteries, screwdrivers, paper, copper tape, all kinds of stuff. So we were very excited to get that, um, but we needed more stuff. So we also bought Legos and Connects this year that will have the ability to have more um, guided lessons until students can develop some skills in the makerspace and then very open-ended activities just by building and creating with them. We developed a this five-year plan after we joined this program that we're doing right now. We didn't have a five-year plan when um, before we, we started this, this coaching process. So this has been really helpful for us to get our thoughts and our planning down a lot more concretely and cohesively and to be able to share it with our principals of this is where the steps that we've taken, this is where we're, we wanna go and um, how we're going to get there because we can't buy everything all at once. So what's it going to look like when we actually open it up next year What's it going to look like in two years, in three years time? So some of that is we will continue to tap into the CTE Perkins Five funds to buy materials. And based on that, we're looking at what are those pathways and what materials do we need to purchase to support that spiral? And when will we do that? And then how are we going to monitor the materials once we have them and take care of them and take care of what's missing. We also wanna start looking at the end of this five-year plan. Um, is the makerspace going to be doing what we are hoping that it will do in the fact of we are developing it to help our students, our elementary students have um, more problem solving skills and creative thinking for their age group, but we also wanna start exposing them and developing their skills to enter those CTE programs with more understanding of what those programs are. So at the end of this five-year cycle, um, taking a look and seeing where the kids are in middle school, is it helping them? And once those middle school kids get to high school, are we seeing better results in our CTE program by having these experiences prior to entering it? And then beyond high school, once they finish the program, are they getting those jobs? Are they, are they being employed? Because that's really the ultimate goal. Um, Nancy, this one is yours. <laughs> um, basically, we're putting together this makerspace and we're envisioning this program K through 12. So we're now thinking of what do the teachers need in order to empower them to be a partner with us, meaning Lisa and myself, in order to run the program independent of us. Because the elementary principal has the vision of the teachers being able to run the maker space. Well, we brainstormed what we, what we think is necessary for this process. And that's basically training in the specific materials that we have ordered, um, sharing research trends and pedagogy. Um, Lisa and I will spend a lot of time modeling for the teachers 
being able to be in the space, um, addressing the students, teaching them and modeling how to think and what the expectations are in order to be open-minded, uh, be a problem solver, be logical, um, and also to take risks and, and have that be safe for them. And Makerspace will be brand new to our teachers and they're not quite sure what to expect. So we will introduce more hands-on ideas and lines on and also the safety protocols in order to be in the in the space safely there will also be some training what what is STEM? what vocabulary do we need so we'll bring in a language arts component especially for our students that are bilingual in american sign language and english that need um, the vocabulary in order to explore the space and participate successfully Okay, that slide was actually, for some reason, got booted in out of order. <laughs> yeah, we, we so, apologize for that. We're gonna go back to the purchasing plan and, and buying materials. So we wanted to, um, when picking out materials, we want to be mindful of our vision that our goal is to support the CTE program. We don't wanna just buy stuff because it's cool and it looks neat and we, we just really like it. <laughs> we want it to be relevant to our students and, and follow our mapped out plan when we do it. And always um, in special education, we always have to have a plan B. So if we, if we have, we want these materials, we, we think these are gonna support it, but they're not going to work out or the teachers tell us that they really want it later on, but we do some investigation. We need to be able to come up with an alternative material for them that will work for our students and do the same things that our, our teachers are wanting, but what they chose might not be what um, will work best for our students. So being mindful of the plan, we um, wanted to look at um, what are the industry sectors? When our students leave, what are, what are the careers? And what are, oops, sorry. What are the CTE pathways that we have on campus currently? So we looked at, we, we are offering um, an auto mechanic class. We're offering food service hospitality. We're offering digital imaging and commercial art design and film. We're offering commercial construction. And this one, not yet, honey. Joe, can you stop, please? Can, um, this one we're not quite offering yet, but it's in development. So we want to start looking at materials that will help support that in the next couple of years once this is set up in our high school. So then we looked at middle school and these are the things that those Perkin Five funds have already purchased to help support that high school. Obviously, we still have things that we are going to need to purchase, but mapping it out this way has really helped us look at where we need to buy things. These are the things that we bought this year. Um, it was mostly Legos, Brick Lab materials and connects in support of that transportation pathway. And those materials also support the construction pathway so they can be used as dual or dual purposes. Um, we have a couple items that support these two pathways, but our focus in purchasing will, will start in um, the digital imaging and, and film. That's where we want to focus our next big purchase. Okay, Nancy. So this is the fun part. 
um, let the fun begin. And we have begun. Uh, right before COVID started, we actually opened up our maker space and I'm going to take you a look into our space and um, how we went about um, kicking off the, the space and the ideas and the excitement for what's going to be. And uh, fortunately that was cut off by COVID, but we're gonna be back at it in the fall. We also spent a lot of time with Paxton Peterson uh, to develop a middle school area in the middle school to facilitate the centers that will, that will have the different skills and the different opportunities for career development. Uh, our CTE teachers go to the middle school and they work on career development with the middle schoolers. And they will also have centers located in their classrooms down in the CTE buildings as well. So whether it be, um, if we go back to the chart that Lisa just showed you, there are the middle school area are all um, Paxton labs. And that's what's going to be in that space in the middle school. So let's take a look at um, our, our kickoff. Yep, right there. Okay, so um, did we have space for Makerspace? That's a very good question. Everybody's looking for a little extra space to do some creative work. And the answer was uh, not so much. So when we went and we saw models for elementary, middle school and high school, we, we realized that it's very common to have space in your library. And the nice connection with that is students can do research, students can be read to, there can be a wonderful literature connection and language development connection in the maker space. So we found a corner in our library and we set it up like this. We needed to pay attention to um, what Lisa said, can, can a wheelchair fit underneath, underneath the, the desk? Um, is it an environment that the students can move freely in? What about the students that don't have um, very good fine motor skills or gross motor skills? Are they going to be able to grab the materials appropriately? In this space at the very top, we do have a traditional Lego wall, but on the right side, we also have a Duplo wall for the students who are in chairs who, who do not have um, sophisticated gross motor skills. So we want to provide the same experiences for the student, but our tools need to change sometimes. And so this is what we're constantly thinking about as we're moving through the space and we're creating um, opportunities for our students to learn, learn about STEM careers and develop ideas that are critical for their development. The next slide is our grand opening. And what we decided to do is open it up with a very light introduction and we had a huge Lego day. And so we transformed the elementary department into Lego day. We used the library, we used the outside, we used the parking lot, we used whatever area we could to get the kids involved and get their hands into thinking, communicating and problem solving with each other. We played games and we asked questions and we, we set up a lot of different kinds of centers. We asked our teachers to be leaders in this. So it's a natural introduction to them on how are they going to work with us in this process. And um, it, was a, it was a really exciting day. It was really fun. So Lisa, um, I'm gonna skip this slide quick look at it. We're going to talk about this one because we have about seven minutes left, Nancy. Okay. And this is um, a STEM day that actually happens in the high school that I mentioned before. And this is an example in 2017 when that started. So STEM has been around in our school, little tidbits here and there, but it's never been a cohesive program. Um, and that is why we're addressing it now in order to put the pieces together from elementary to CTE. Uh, this program is really, it's a fabulous program. Uh, the high school department brings in deaf professionals 
and who have direct communication with our students. They serve as mentors and role models, and they really show you that the deaf can. Deaf, the deaf can be engineers, the deaf can be scientists, the can, deaf can be doctors, and, um, and, all, and participate in all sorts of STEM activities, and hopefully motivating our students in order to be more curious, ask more questions, maybe see themselves standing in their shoes one day. And this is an ongoing day that we provide our students sponsored by the National Institute for the Deaf um, in Rochester. And they um, support us and they also help us find and locate mentors that are out there as professionals in the field who are deaf. Okay, so now is the time that we want feedback from you guys. Um, Nancy's going to put the link to the survey in the chat. So if you could fill those out for us, and as you're filling it out, if you have questions um, or have comments for us, we'd love to open this up to you guys at this time. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen okay. for the moment. I did want to respond to um, Tina's comment about Ozobots. And uh, yes, they are fabulous and they're on our list. We just have to wait until we can align the middle school program with what we're doing in elementary because funding will take time and building will take time. And we're not quite sure, we're, we're, we're really struggling with that. We, we don't know when to bring that in because robotics is not really a strong program at our school. So if you have any suggestions on that, that would be great. Um, and that's why we're here is to ask you about your experiences and what, what you can, how you can help us um, move through and provide the best program possible for our students. So any gaps that you, you saw or any ideas you saw, we would, we would like to hear, hear from you. Our district, as I said earlier, is a high school district and each of our three comprehensive high schools we have three um, C, um, California Partnership Academies that are CTE pathways. So some of the pathways that you have listed for your kids are pathways that we already have established. Um, one thing that I would suggest for the high school level, if you have any local community colleges or even four-year colleges, we would like to partner up with you so that the students can have the dual enrollment so they earn the college credit and get that college level experience. So by the time they finish high school, they could have some sort of certification. You also would like to reach out to your local industries and see if they could start providing some internships for your students. Wonderful, thank you for that. Thank, thank you. you. 